Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our video service for this morning. I have a, a scripture to read, and then we'll have our opening prayer. And the scripture is Genesis chapter 21, verses 1 through 5. It's talking about the birth of Isaac. And it says here, Now the Lord was gracious to Sarah, as he had said, and the Lord did for Sarah what he had promised. Sarah became pregnant and bore a son to Abraham in his old age at the very time God had promised. Abraham gave the name Isaac to the son Sarah bore him. When his son Isaac was eight days old, Abraham circumcised him as God commanded him. Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born to him. Let us pray. Father in heaven and most gracious God, we come before you now with humble hearts in adoration to praise your holy name. Lord, we are thankful for the expression of your love and that Jesus came to this earth to be uh, our Redeemer. He is our salvation and hope. We just thank you so much for that. We come before you this morning to give you our worship in spirit and truth as an expression of love to you. We want to give you glory, Father, because you deserve it. This is the day that the Lord has made, we know, and it is a time to rejoice and be glad. I just pray that we would do that. And I just pray others would see that rejoicing in us. May the words we have here today be an encouragement and an edification uh, for us as we live our lives on this this earth. I just pray that we can always draw nearer to you in all things as we strive to be our very best. It's in Christ that we pray. Amen. Good morning, church family. If you wouldn't happen to carry a songbook with you, number 453, Love Lifted Me, is a song we will sing um, this morning before the communion service. Love Lifted Me. Please join me in singing. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, seeking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. From the waters lifted me, now safe am I. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. All my heart to Him I give, ever to Him I'll cling. In His blessed presence live, ever His praises sing. Love so mighty and so true, merits my soul's best songs. Faithful, loving service to, to Him belongs. Love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help. Love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help. Love lifted me. Souls in danger, look above. Jesus completely saves. He will lift you by His love out of the angry waves. He's the master of the sea. Bellows His will obey. He, your Savior, wants to be. Be saved today. Love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help, love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me, 
When nothing else could help, love lifted me. If you happen to have your Bibles handy, I'm going to ask if you would turn with me to John chapter 15. John chapter 15, and I'm going to read uh, verses 12 and 13. says, My command is this, that you love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. I want to ask you today just three simple questions for you to contemplate. How does it feel to know one has laid down their life for you? How does it feel to be given an incredible gift that you cannot obtain on your own? And how does it feel to be given a blessing that only God can give? Let's pray together. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we know as your sons and daughters that you have given us a blessing that is beyond compare a gift that we can no other way obtain. Lord, we're thankful for your son who laid down his life to provide this for us. And Lord, as we partake of the supper you set aside for us to join together with you in heart and thought, Lord, may we take this bread, a representation of his body, in a manner that is humble and pleasing in your sight. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's share a prayer together for the cup. Our Heavenly Father, we learn very early in the life of the Israelites that there is no forgiveness without the shedding of blood. Lord, your son willingly laid his life down for each one of us. Lord, thank you for that, and may we not take this cup in vain. In Jesus' name, amen. It's an opportune time to reflect upon the blessings that we have been given, and it's an opportunity to return to the Lord some of what he's blessed us with. I want to continue to read in John chapter 15. I want to read down uh, verses 14 uh, down through 17. He says, You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends, for everything that I learned from my Father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you, so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, and so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command. Love each other. Share a prayer for our blessings. Our Heavenly Father, the love you've shown to us is evident. Lord, as we contemplate our gift to you, may it be one that is used to further your kingdom, that shows the love that you have commanded us to share with each other. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, brethren and friends. I'd like to thank you for joining me in another study in this digital worship service. And I'd like to invite you to turn to the book of Genesis, chapter 21, because I want to talk today about the joy of God's fulfilled promise. When God promises things, as, we have, as you have seen in various times in the Old Testament, as well as the New, 
we see where what God says always goes. Because God is basing his promise and what he is saying to us off of his righteousness. That's why in the New Testament we see the scripture that says, For God cannot lie. But as we turn our attention to this part of Abraham's life, I want to see the joy of God's fulfilled promise in God giving Isaac to Abraham and Sarah. In Genesis chapter 21 and verse 1, it says, And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did for Sarah as he had spoken. Now notice with me how God mentioning this, tw mentioning this twice should send a flag up in our mind that teaches us that this is something that we should pay attention to. And the reason why we should pay attention to this is because what God says, he has spoken, he has spoken again, and now it has come to fruition. The Lord has visited Sarah. In Genesis chapter 17 and verse 19, notice what God is telling Abraham here. Then God said, No, Sarah, your wife, shall bear you a son, and you shall call his name Isaac. I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his descendants after him. So when we see the phrase, as he had said, and as he had spoken, this is a review for you and I, as well as to the people whom Genesis was written to, to know that this was a promise that God was fulfilling because he had promised it. Now, what does this tell us then about God's words? I would like to look at the psalmist in chapter 12 and verse 6. Notice what the psalmist says. The words of the Lord are pure words, like silver tried in a furnace of earth purified seven times. I love that analogy that the inspired psalmist uses because it's talking about a process where you take a special metal, for example, silver, and you burn the impurities away in the refining process. But notice how the number seven is used in this passage, and that implies the perfection and so when it says the pure words like silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times, this shows that God's words are unadulterated. They are the truth and they are perfect. No wonder God can make a promise and an oath and swear to himself. Notice Hebrews chapter 6 verses 13 through 18. The writer says, For when God made a promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no one greater, he swore by himself, saying, Surely blessing I will bless you, and multiplying I will multiply you. And so after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. For men indeed swear by the greater, and an oath for confirmation is for them an end of all dispute. Thus God determining to show more abundantly to the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel confirmed it by an oath that by two immutable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we might have strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold of the hope set before us. The hope that is set before us is the hope revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now that's emphasis mine at the, at the end of verse 18, and that's the point that I want to make as we stop right here, is that the hope that is set before us and what is being talked about here, and as we correlate it with the hope that would come through Isaac and the great line of people that would come through him until we reach Jesus Christ, Jesus being born, of course, in the gospel, is the point being made that God made this promise. According to the Apostle Paul in the book of Ephesians chapter 1, God made this promise way before the foundations of the earth were laid. And so when God was telling Abraham this, this was a plan that was already put into motion and action, and God is sharing with Abraham his divine plan of how Abraham was going to truly be the father 
of many nations. And that would happen through Jesus Christ as we read in the book of Galatians. But I want to go to Hebrews chapter 6 verses 19 and 20 and look more, more in-depthly on how do we know that the hope that is set before us is revealed in Christ Jesus. Well, notice what the Hebrew writer says. This hope we have is an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which enters the presence behind the veil, where the forerunner has entered for us, even Jesus, having become high priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. Now, in Hebrews 6, 13 through 18, we see this word here called immutable. Oh, well, what does that mean? Immutable means unchanging. When God says it, that's exactly how it's going to happen. God said to Abraham, Sarah will bear a son. And what happened? Sarah bore a son and her in Abraham's old age. God is unchanging. In Genesis chapter 21 and verse 1, as we continue discussing the pure words of God, notice, and the Lord visited Sarah. And then when you skip down to the other phrase we want to look at, and the Lord did for Sarah. Well, what does this mean? Well, in Genesis chapter 18 and verse 10, the Lord actually told Abraham, and he said, I will certainly return to you according to the time of life. And behold, Sarah, your wife, shall have a son. Now, these are the pure words of God. These are the unchanging words of God. And so when we get to Genesis chapter 21 and verse 1, it's starting to come to fruition, isn't it? The promise will come to fruition at the right time. Notice how it says the time of life. This was Sarah's time, the appropriate time for her to bear a son. And then in Genesis 18 and verse 14, notice, is anything too hard for the Lord? At the appointed time, I will return to you according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. So there would come a time in Sarah's life where she would be able to bear this son, and it would be, notice this, at the right time. The promise would come to fruition in God's time. And when you look at the word appointed, it implies something that has already been pre-planned. In Galatians chapter 4 and verse 4, how is this information important to Christians today? It is because of this. But when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. The unchanging words of God are just as unchanging today as they were for Abraham and Sarah. And what a blessing it is to know that God with his unchanging word is calling you and I to be saved. And so as we end this morning, I want, to, want us to really focus on, on the purity of God's Word. And that purity is found in the Scriptures, and we can read it and study it every day. We can be reaffirmed and renewed in the purity of God's Word because as Christians, we understand, and as the immutable words of the Father have proclaimed, Christ is coming back. And so we know, and as Jesus teaches us in the Gospels, that we must prepare and that we must always be ready. So let us do that. Let's prepare. Let's be ready. Let us take our hope and our strength to do good in the fact that God has promised this and that at his appointed time, it will come to fruition and Jesus will come back and for those of us that have that are righteous in the sight of Jesus will be invited to the marriage feast of the lamb and what a wonderful day that will be so as we close 
I want to ask you, if you are watching our video, are you prepared for Jesus to come back? God has said that Jesus is going to come back. And as we have seen in our study this morning, whatever God says is exactly the way that it's going to be. Are you ready? Friend, if you need help to get ready, I would love to help you. Would you allow me to study with you? We, will, we can study by phone, by internet, by correspondence course. Whatever it would take to get you to get ready for that great day of the Lord. Would you give me that chance? We will have our contact information at the end of this video. Please contact me and let me know how I can help. Maybe there's a Christian this evening that life has you down for some reason and, and you're discouraged about things that may be personal things that are happening in your life or things that are happening in your community or you're just discouraged in general. Well, take, take this as an encouragement that God loves you. And he also says that we need to humble ourselves before him and cast all our care upon his shoulders because he cares for us. Brother, sister, he doesn't want you to be burdened by what's dragging you down. No, he wants to lift you up. Would you allow him to lift you up? And if you need help, if we can pray for you or pray with you, please contact us and let us know. And until we meet again, I bid you all a very pleasant good morning. For our final song uh, this morning, we're going to sing uh, Love One Another. Please join me in song, if you would, please. Angry words, oh, let them never from my tongue unbridled slip. May the heart's best impulse ever check them ere they soil the lip. Love one another, thus said the Savior. Children, obey the Father's blessed command. Love one another, thus said the Savior. Children, obey the blessed command. Love is much too pure and holy. Friendship is too sacred far. For a moment's reckless folly, thus to desolate and mar. Love one another, thus said the Savior. Children, obey the Father's blessed command. Love one another, thus said the Savior. Children, obey the blessed command. Let our words be sweetly spoken. Let kind thoughts be greatly stirred. Show our love to one another with abundance of kind words. Love one another, thus said the Savior. Children, obey the Father's blessed command. Love one another, thus said the Savior. Children, obey the blessed command. As we close out this morning, I'd just like to read a scripture and then we'll have a closing prayer. And that scripture comes from Psalm chapter 37, verses 3 through 6 talking about trusting in the Lord. And it says here in Psalms 37, 3 through 6, Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him and he will do this. He will make sure, he will make your righteousness 
shine like the dawn. Let us pray. Father, um, as we close today, we give you thanks for being our source of comfort and healing in the troubled world we do live in. Uh, we just pray that you continue to help us to work through the adversity that comes before us each and every day. Continue to lead us in paths of righteousness as we lean upon you to guide us. You are our refuge and strength, Father, and we give you thanks for that. And we give you thanks for all the blessings that we receive from you daily. You are a loving Father who cares for his children, and we are so thankful for that. And just pray that uh, the things we have done today in the worship will guide us, they will encourage us, and support us through this coming week. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen.